This video will explain parachute attachment. So we have our tube done and we have the nose cone attached and that's where we're going to attach it to on that little loop. So let me get this out of the way. And we've got our parachute completely made and all the lines, the way we installed them, should all lay flat. So I want to gather them up. Okay, and then I'm pulling tight and I want to make sure all the corners are together down here. So I'm grabbing all the corners together and then I'm sliding my fingers in until I find the top of the loop. Okay, so there's that loop. I'm just going to pass it through right here. And then take, keep holding that, don't let that go. And pass the parachute through there. Okay. Yep, the nose cone went through. And then just pull tight. Just like that. So now our parachute is attached to the nose cone. And it's ready to launch. Um, there are the, the basic um, folding, parachute folding technique, a lot of people will just lay it flat like this, get all the corners together. Yeah, let me get it flat, fold it in half. Fold it in half. Okay. All right, so I got all my corners together. <clears throat> and I'm going to take the shroud lines <clears throat> and just lay them across, loop them over the top, fold them in. And you want to do a zigzag fold on this just like that. So the technique was find about a third of the way in, fold over, then fold the other way across. Make sure those lines stay on the inside of the shroud. And then just roll it up like a burrito. And we'll shove it inside. Now you can use wadding on this or you can use the foam plugs. In Apogee we sell the foam plugs that will act as wadding and the foam plug will stop right here so the parachute must fit in that spot right there. If you're using wadding you have a little bit more room to work with but the foam plug pushes better. I don't think I have an extra foam plug here but you can buy those on the Apogee website. So then you just shove everything inside you know make sure you have that plug in or the wadding in there and basically our rocket is done. Oh, one last thing. Okay, so now we got this extra piece of shock cord here. And that's not going to want to go in because of the shroud, uh, the, the shoulder. So we need to cut another V-notch on the shoulder. And I'm going to do it on the opposite side of the first one here. So there was the first one. I'm just going to cut a V-notch. Just be very light with your X-Acto knife. Okay, so I want to hold the shock cord nice and tight along the body tube, push all the rest of the shock cord in until there's just a little bit. So I'm going to kind of walk it down, kind of like a hinge. and tight. I want this cord nice and tight along the body tube because I don't want that 
flapping around in the breeze because that's going to con contrib contribute to a lot of drag. Now there's not a launch lug on this um, and we're leaving the launch lug off on, on, on our competition flights because that launch lug adds a lot of drag. You can put a launch lug on. Uh, basically you just draw a line, um, find the balance point, and then that's where I would put the launch lug if you're going to put a launch lug on it. But I would recommend launching this out of a competition launch tower and use a piston launcher to augment the thrust down here. Because this is such a big wide rocket, they don't go very high. So you want that piston launcher to help boost it into the air. Um, so that's basically the construction of the parachute um, duration rocket. Um, you could, it was basically, streamer duration is identical. Um, so basically just swap out the parachute for a streamer and this can also be used as streamer duration. So thank you for watching these videos. Uh, go out and have a great flight and uh, let us know what you think of this kit.